Hi, humans. Uh, so we're going to continue uh, talking about sequences of events. So section nine, uh, at least in this video. So now, so in the last few videos, we've been talking about basically two sequences of events, right? So we choose a bag and then we choose chocolate or we flip a coin and then we flip another coin um, or we have exam one and then we have a second exam. Well, now what happens if like we have multiple events, right? So say I flip 10 different coins or I draw seven cards or I grab 34 bars of chocolate out of a bag. Like, you know, something you do on a nightly basis. Um, at least I hope I'm not the only one having 34 bags of chocolate uh, on a daily basis. Um, life is exciting. <laughs> so let's let's start off so, right? Um, so first, let's say I have two events, right? So this we kind of saw. So if I have the probability of A and B, so if I have two events, uh, then we kind of saw that this is given by the probability of B times the probability of A given B. Or we can look at this the other way, right? We can look at it as the probability of A given times the probability of B given A, right? So I can really look at this and this in any order I want. I can switch them around. It doesn't matter. Uh, the only, the main thing you want to care about is whatever's in the second component is in this. So the second component matches up. That's the important part. Okay. How about if we have a third event? So let's add an event C. Um, and let's see what happens when we do A and B and C. Um, so let's look. So we have B, A and B and C. Now for all intents and purposes, I just added these brackets here to make life a little easier. Um, and we're going to look at um, this kind of, uh, which one am I looking at? I'm looking at the second way of looking at things here. So I take this first part and I put it here, right? And then like I said, it has to match up with what's in the second given condition, right? A and B. Uh, and so we have this. Now the second one, or this first part, we, can, we already have from above. So we can split this into its own little probability conditions. Probability of A times probability of B given A times the probability of C given A and B. Well, now you should start noticing a pattern, right? So I started off with one thing. This is my first thing. Then I have two given one. Then I have my third thing given one and two. So we might imagine if I had a fourth thing. So a fourth thing, I would have what? So four given one, two, and three. So we would probably have the probability of D given A and B and C. And actually, this turns out to be right. Like, bam, it works out. So what do we get? So this is the multiplication rule for n different events. Uh, and so what we have is, let's write this out. The probability of um, arbitrary things. So A1 uh, times A2 all the way up to An. Uh, this is given by the probability of A1, right? So we start off with just A, with number one. Then we do number two, given A1. Okay, done. Then we do number three, given the first two, A1 and A2. And we keep doing this all the way until we get to An, given by A1, A2, A all the way to An minus one. Bam! Look at that. You can now have a number of events and you are good to go. Um, so let's look at how quick is this example? This example looks quick. Okay, uh, let's look at a quick example. We're gonna look at something a little bizarre. Um, no, we'll stop here. Uh, so we'll stop here for this video um, and we'll do uh, the example in the next video. So see you then.